all parts for the engine rebuild arrived and I can go ahead with removing all seals, all bearings and everything and put the new shiny stuff in. I was lucky with the cylinder. It just needed new honing and an oversized piston. New. I was, uh, in my opinion, the scratches were quite deep and I thought it, it would need um, a bigger bore and then a new nickel seal plating. But luckily, honing was enough, so then it didn't go too expensive for this. I want to start with removing all shaft seals, and I just saw that, in my opinion, I took that out already, but it was in like that. In my opinion, this shaft seal is in, in the wrong direction. Because, see this um, lip? seal lip and it has a closed side so it's a closed and open side and usually when mounting these shaft seals the open side so the lip should point to the to the media you want to seal against and in this case I want to seal the oil side against the crankshaft side and when the fuel air mixture gets sucked in it's getting pre-compressed in this um, in this crankshaft case so there's a little bit of pressure inside here so in my opinion this ring should be mounted like that so the pressure inside here comes this way and compresses this lip against the shaft. That's how it's supposed to be in, and you always want to mount it like that. So the media, the oil or air or whatever you want to um, seal against should compress this lip against the shaft. And the workshop manual don't give any information about how to mount these rings. Everything is explained for the bearings, like the direction of the cage and stuff, but nothing for these rings. So that's really strange. And before I remove anything, I will take a photo of every case and every side, just in case I don't know what was where later on. I'll try to remove the bearings with heating up the case and spraying ice spray on the bearing and then it should uh, the bearing should be smaller than the housing and then it should come out easily. So I'll try that first. I want to remove this pin so the um, engine case sits flush on the bench. So I'll try to press it out with the wise, but be very careful not to scratch anything. Now oh, it's moving. <coughs> Still wondering why it was so tight. It shouldn't be like this. Maybe it was glued in or I don't know. Anyway, I'll go ahead with this one now. Hmm. And to remove that bearing. I need to remove this screw 
And to do so, I'm going to use that impact drive. And I remove these pins also because I don't want to put that case only on one two on two points. Okay, probably leave them in. And I use some wood plate instead. This one for example. So I can put it like this now. Bigger one. I'll try without eye spray now. Let's see how it goes. Huh. This one is an easy fit. So this engine case is done. I'll start again with removing these seals. By the way, if you want to exchange this while the motor is completely mounted and the shaft is in, you can try to use a really small wood screw or two screws and screw them in here in this ring and try to pull it out with the screw with the shaft on. Sometimes this works. So I will drive that out from this side. Hmm. Doesn't work at all. Longer screwdriver. And you see, the rubber lip points to the oil side. So, let's see how tight this one is. I'm not sure how to get those out because they sit in a hole and I can't reach it from the other side. But I'll find some solution. <laughs> so it went through the shaft seal and now it fits right in the bearing. <laughs> it's not quite exactly what I wanted, but no big deal. I'll try with the device again. It's a little stressful when something doesn't work out as I thought. <laughs> but I won bearing loose. Now I can now take out the shaft seal that sits underneath. Oof. What I just saw. Look at this. I think. That's from an old water pump. What the fuck? What can this be? It looks like this white plastic, doesn't it? But... I'm wondering, oh yeah, that's where the water pump goes in. I don't have the special tool to pull those two bearings, because this uh, 
special tool to that grabs the inner ring and pulls it out but I don't have it so I will try with heat, ice spray and yeah that will be the first try. I'm working it out slowly. So this is actually the arm of a free arm bearing puller but for outer bearings. So I'm using this totally wrong but whatever works. <sighs> Human win, bearing lose. Got it. So now only one is left. What I'll try for that is I put a washer inside so I don't destroy the aluminum on the ground and I will use this screw and try to lift the bearing up with this surface of the of this nut. So that's what I'm gonna do. Put it in, try to hold that nut somehow and then turn this one in. That's the plan. If it works I don't know. Maybe you can see if it moves. Mm -hmm. The screw is loose, so I think it moved a little bit. The other method where the screw didn't work at all, so I will try this method again. And I put three nuts in the hole to have a support for this arm. And now I hope I can get it out with heat and ice spray. So let's see. It didn't move at all, so more heat and more ice spray. So I'm getting it at bearing out, but don't try this method, just buy the right tool and, you know, I got it out like that, but don't do it. <clears throat> Finally, after two hours, I won. And see what I found in this, underneath the bearing. Ooh. Ah, just kidding. I put it in. Both cases are ready for the new bearing, so I'll unpack them and and uh, start mounting them. First I need to see which, which one goes where and the workshop manual gives a direction for these bearings because these um, plastic cases have an open and a closed side. And <coughs> The workshop manual advises directions how to mount the, mount the open and closed side of these cases. So um, I will mount them and later on I will film a close up of all bearings to see in what direction they go. That was easy and mount the screw. To push the bearing in I will use the outer ring of the old bearing and the other old bearing. And this tool. Let's see if it works. <laughs> you don't need all the special tools. Just be clever. Just very important not to push push on that inner ring. So that's all you that's all you care for. So let's put that one in. Need to make it straight first. Okay, this one goes in quite hard. Maybe it works a little better like that. So it's not moving so much. But finally it's moving. Yes. 
think it was not all the way straight and that was the problem. But I don't have a hy hydraulic press so it's all the way flush. So I guess it's all the way in. It's turning easily, no resistance. I think it's good. On the other case I want to start with this uh, shaft seal. But I don't know which one it was, so I will try. I have three with the same outside diameter and two with the same inside diameter. So I will test on this. Okay, this one is too big. This one is too big. But this one fits. So, that's the one to go with. It's a smaller inner diameter, 25. And I will put some oil on this area. And the sealing lip with the spring points to the inside of the case. So I'll just push it in. Oh yeah. This is going easy. Can do it by hand. No. Not all the way. So we'll see if I find a good socket in the same size. Oh yeah, this one is just perfect. So next comes the bearing. So I need to find the right size. And the manual says that the closed side of the cage should point to the outside. Okay, this one is going easy now. Very nice. Yeah. And in goes the last one. That click sound was the one I wanted to hear. Then it's all the way thought about. Oh yeah. The two crankcases are ready for now and I will show you the mounting direction of the bearings as promised before. So here the open side of the cage goes to the inside. Same here. And the same on this one. So all three have the open side of the cage to the inside on this crankcase. And let's see how it's here. We see the inside of the crankcase and this bearing has the closed side on the inside. And that's the only one like that. So that's how it looks. My Crankshaft bearings don't have an open and closed side, they have the steel cage, so both sides are the same on these. And by the way, yesterday I got this awesome bike lift and I don't need to crawl on the ground anymore to clean the bikes and work on them. I'm so happy about this thing, it helps a lot because I have another bike lift, smaller one, you see there, but with that I can only lift my motocross and super motorbike, so I'm really happy about this thing. The next thing to do is to check the crankshaft and measure everything and then put on the one be crankshaft bearing. So what I will do is I check the axial play of this. Um, of this lower bearing there's no radial play at all and the axial play can be up to one millimeter and I measured with 0.5 and it's about 0.7 to 8 I would say so that's fine for me oh no I was wrong the play the radial play here can be up to 1.3 millimeter so I'm definitely underneath that I'll also measure this distance and it should be between 48.95 and 49.05 
and I have exactly 49 so that's also good perfect next thing to do is to put on the crankshaft bearing on this side so I will heat it up and put it on I really hope that this will go on easy I don't have a plan B right now Lucky me. This one time it went according to plan. After putting on a new crankcase bearing it's very important to measure the distance from this surface to the inner ring of the bearing because the crankcase needs some play inside of the crank and the crankshaft needs play inside of the crankcases and you need to um, how to say level out the play in the crankcase so you will measure this distance in my case it is 76 or 9 or 66 66 9 to 70 so 66 9 to 67 something adjust the right play of the crankshaft in the crankcase there are these um, different types of washers with different thickness and they will come on this side and with that you can adjust the play of the crankcase I measured like three times and in this case I don't need this washer anymore because the distance here is according to spec so I don't need to adjust anything. I will leave this, I will mount it without this washer and then I'm fine. Actually I need to correct because I just measured this washer and it's only 0.1 millimeter. So I will use this one because I'm in between the two kinda, kinda specs. So I think 0.1 is the right one to use here. So that's good. But I clean it really well with this cleaning pad so it's exactly the thickness it should be to mount the crankshaft this needs to be 90 to 100 degrees so the bearing will be will go in easily so we'll heat this up pretty much then I put in the shaft seal and then comes the crankshaft and of course this distance washer I am so nervous because I think maybe this bearing won't go in easily. I don't know. Wish me luck. I'm not sure with this now. I'm gonna cool down the bearing. Oh, I'm so nervous. I hope this goes well. worked out I'm so happy now oh shit <laughs> haven't been so nervous for long what the fuck it worked you see this face I'm just really happy <laughs> why I was so nervous on this was if this bearing wouldn't have gone in easy. I cannot just... How would I push it in, you know? You cannot use the hammer on this because you will destroy the bearing. You can do nothing. I don't have the special tool to press on here. And then the case cools down and I don't know. Nothing will, will work anymore. So that, that's the reason I was so nervous about this. But it worked out pretty good. <laughs> 